We live in an era in which the bizarre has become the commonplace. And here to talk about this amazing fact, we have a couple of guys. You've met them before. It's always great when they come to Prophecy Watchers. Tom Horn and Josh Peck. Hey, guys, Gary. welcome. Well, thank great you. To be with you, Gary. And I'm going to hold up the book which you have co-authored. It's called Abaddon Arising. Abaddon, a proper name. It appears in the Bible, right, Tom? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the king of the bottomless pit, also known as Apollyon, and actually also known by the ancient Greeks as Apollo. You know, a lot of people probably yeah. don't know that there's a Greek god in the Bible and he's considered to be this demonic destroyer mm -hmm. in the underworld who's going to play a role in part of prophecy. And as I said uh, in the introduction, we're living in a time when the bizarre has become the thing you see on TV. Oh yeah. The commonplace. Uh, we hear about things that 50 years ago people would not have entertained for a second. Mm -hmm. uh, we've gone, I think, beyond the age of technology into the age bordering on, uh, on, on some kind of an interdimensional reality that people are only dimly aware of. And, and I think that you're touching upon that in, in this book. And where to begin? Uh, Abaddon arising. Uh, the one thing that is, uh, I think, centered upon in this book is CERN. Uh, it's a, a, a scientific facility located between France and uh, Switzerland on the border. Yep. A, in a in a very uh, shall we say unusual location. <laughs> Let's talk about that whole thing and what it means to Christians today. And yeah. Let's, let's start with Josh. Sure. Well, it's, it's built in an inconvenient place. So the difference uh, between the LHC and CERN, CERN is, um, well, we'll start with the LHC. The LHC is the big particle collider, the big 17-mile uh, circumference ring that collides particles to try to create new so particles. LHC is large, large hadron, hadron collider. collider. Yes. So what you do is, is get these uh, particles mm -hmm feeding toward each other and you stage a collision. Yes, exactly. And that brings rise to new particles. So that's basically the LHC and its function. CERN is the, the governing body, the, the people who uh, decide what this big machine is going to be used for. The interesting thing that you brought up is the location of this machine, of the LHC. They, they decided to put it on the border of France and Switzerland. There's no real good reason for that. Uh, and they also put it underground. And the, the, when you go on the CERN website, the reason for why they put it underground, they'll say, well, real estate is really expensive in that area. Easy solution, build it somewhere else, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, but they didn't. They picked that location for a very specific reason. Uh, and actually, I'll, I'll hand it to Tom. Well, to... We, we, we actually go into the history of this. The bottom mm -hmm. line is that very location, and we mean dead center, mm -hmm. to where they built uh, the Large Hadron Collider, was in ancient times known as Apaleacom. This was a place where there was a temple to the god Apollo, or Abaddon as in the title mm -hmm. of the book, mm -hmm. Revelation chapter 9, right? An angel comes right. down from heaven having the key to the bottomless pit, opens up the pit, these terrible insectoid things come up out of the ground, begin torturing mankind. It says, but they have a king over them. Mm -hmm. His name is Abaddon. Uh, and in the uh, Greek tongue, his name is Apollyon or Apollo, who's actually referred to several times uh, in the Scripture. In fact, it's very interesting that the Apostle Paul uh, wrote to the Thessalonians and he said that the Antichrist would be the son of of perdition, and that's the Greek word apalia, apalion, yep. apollo. Son of destruction. He will yeah. be the son of destruction. Revelation 17, 8, and the beast shall rise up out of the bottomless pit, right? And enter into perdition, apalion, apollo, apalion. Uh, so it, it's a little concerning when you think of all of the places on earth mm -hmm. where they could have built the world's largest particle collider uh, that they decided to build it right over the top of the ancient location 
Apaliacom. In fact, they had to stop during construction because they started digging up some of the ruins of the ancient temple of Apollo. Yeah, ancient this is, Roman ruins. <laughs> this is also where they believe that the abusos, the abyss, the lid, to use a real layman's mm-hmm. terms, over the top of mm-hmm. the bottomless pit is located. And furthermore, they've gone on to say that among all the other things they're doing at the uh, LHC, Sergio Bertolucci who is the science director there, said, Mm -hmm. we intend to open a doorway here. uh, And we may send something through it, or he said, something may come through that uh, doorway into our reality. So uh, they intend to open a doorway at the LHC, the very location that the ancients believed was the lid Mm -hmm. over the top of the bottomless pit. Now, at this point, I want to interject my thought, which is to you who are sharing this experience with us today, uh, I read the Bible believingly, Mm -hmm. always since I was saved. And I just looked at the Bible and I said, this is God's uh, text. It's perfect, and I believe every word of it. I just read it uh, believingly. And so when I read chapter 9 in in Revelation, the fifth angel sounds, uh, and he says, I saw a star fall from heaven to earth, and to him was given the key to the bottomless pit. Mm -hmm. I just believe that. Mm -hmm. That someplace there is an actual bottomless pit, and there is an actual key, Mm -hmm. and there's an actual angel. And I read this in Greek, and the bottomless pit in in Greek is called phreatus abusos which literally translates into the well shaft of the abyss, Mm -hmm. which really uh, describes a physical uh, geological location which has remained closed but will be opened up. And this is the light side. The Bible gives us the God's interpretation. The dark side is what scientists and, uh, uh, shall we say, uh, satanic uh, groups of all kinds, are, are they're trying to shortcut or short circuit their way to power. That's right. Well, yep. and, and, and I think that this is spoke of in Revelation 9 where you just read about this pit that's going to be open because in verse 21 when it talks about those people who are being tortured by these insectoids that come up out of the earth, <clears throat> it says, and yet they repented not of their sorcery. And this is the Greek word uh, pharmakia, an effort to open a doorway into another reality, to make contact. This is the, you know, this is sorcery mm-hmm. from the most ancient times, this effort to contact entities that are behind a dimensional veil. Uh, but somehow here, the people who were trying to do this are tortured. So again, it's concerning when you realize that at the very location that the ancients believed the doorway to this abyss is, Mm -hmm. we have the world's most powerful particle collider and the scientists there saying we are going to open a doorway into another reality. What really started you off in this direction, and Josh I have a question for you in a minute, but what really started you off in this direction uh, is when you went to Mount uh, Graham. Yeah. You traveled there, we, we saw the videos, you went with Chris Putnam. Yes, yeah, and uh, for those people, we know that Chris Putnam is familiar to much of the Prophecy Watchers right. audience, and if they haven't heard this yet, we would want them to know that Chris Putnam did pass away recently. He was 51 years of age. It appears that he died of heart failure while he was asleep, and he just went on to be with the Lord. Uh, very much missed. Him and I wrote four books together. Uh, and what got us started, of course, was the book Petrus Romanus, The Final Pope is Here. But what was interesting is when we were doing shows like Prophecy Watchers and other shows talking about uh, the Vatican, the Pope, people then would contact us after the fact and they kept saying, yeah, but what do you make of the Vatican talking about aliens. And the, the, the new Pope, Francis, I would baptize the aliens. And some of their top astronomers talking about these being our space brothers. Well, people are very curious. They want to know where the Vatican is coming from right. with all that commentary. And to make a long story short, Chris and I knew that uh, not to come across as just a couple of evangelical throwing question marks at the Vatican, we wanted to get to the bottom of that. So we went to Mount Graham in Arizona where they have the Vatican has their advanced technology telescope, but also the large binocular telescope, Mm -hmm. the largest of its kind in the world, is on the top of a mountain 
in southeastern Arizona. A lot of people don't know that, right? Yeah. Well, we went to we went there. We wrote a whole book on it that's in the Prophecy Watcher store called hey, Exo Vaticana. My, yeah. By the way, isn't that mountain considered to be a uh, a sacred place? Well, that's yes. the deal. So we come down off the mountain, and I'm on your program and other programs, and I'm saying I think the reason that the Apache did not want the Vatican and NASA and Arizona State University building this big observatory is because it's sacred ground to them. There's, you know, their dead forefathers, dead foremothers are buried on that mountain. They don't want machines up there. So it's like a graveyard. Well, then I was emailed by a member of the Apache Nation, and he said, while what you said is fine, it's true, that's not the whole story. He said the real reason that the Apache did not want them on Mount Graham is because Mount Graham is one of the four holiest mountains in all of the world to all indigenous people. And it is because it is what you would call a stargate, a doorway, a strategic geographic location through which entities have entered into and exited from our three-dimensional reality since the dawn of time. Wow. And we vetted that and found out that that is indeed their belief system, that this is a strategic place. We live in an age in which science and science fiction have come together head on. Mm -hmm. Wow. Having said that, Josh, uh, that's your bailiwick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and I want to put to you a question. <clears throat> How would you explain uh, to our viewers, mm -hmm. that all of this conversation we're having, which borders sometimes on the unbelievable, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. how is this pertinent to today's Christian? Uh, you go to church, you believe the Bible, you pray, uh, but hey, keep that bizarre stuff away from <laughs> me. That has nothing to do with the Bible. How would you address that thought? In short, the Bible is a bizarre book. <laughs> you know, there's a, <laughs> there's a lot of really strange things in there that unfortunately don't always get talked about in the church. And wow. when they do, they're used in uh, generally like Christianese, just Christian type of language. A lot of, uh, a lot of times the things that are happening, especially in quantum physics, but at places like CERN, they'll use totally different language. And, and it's, it's sort of in this effort to... Uh, show a division between science and religion or, mm -hmm. or you know, anything like that. When in reality, we're all talking about the same thing, we're just using different words. Mm -hmm. So where uh, scientists at CERN, they'll say extra dimensions. To us, that's the heavenlies, you know, the, the spiritual mm -hmm. realm, the supernatural reality. Uh, now, of course, they're not coming at it from a Christian perspective at all. They're, they don't generally um, equate the Bible with any of this. But I also believe that the reason it's so important for Christians to get a hold of this stuff is because it does have to do with prophecy. And if we remain ignorant of it, we remove ourselves from the conversation, then uh, we take away our choice of what happens in our own world. They're free to do whatever they want. You know, um, The people that work at CERN compared to the rest of the world, it's not a whole lot of people, but they're making some big decisions that could usher in these horrible you know, Revelation 9 things. Yeah. Um, we should have a say in that. You know, we, we should be aware of what's going on. We should be able to hold them accountable to what they're doing and have them answer some questions that we have. But unfortunately, um, they've created this environment, and not, not every scientist and not every physicist, but, but some of them, they, they've created this environment where Christians feel like you have to be a genius to understand this stuff. Um, don't even bother trying to understand it or look into it. We, we can understand because we have PhDs and all this nonsense. Um, and that's all it is, it's nonsense. Christians can understand it just fine because we have the Bible. Now, when you joined Skywatch, mm -hmm. you, you sort of brought... Uh, the word multiverse along mm -hmm. with you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I hear that word all the time mm -hmm. in your books and, and, and when you're interviewed. So explain multiverse. Yeah. Well, usually when people hear the word multiverse, they think of what's called the many worlds interpretation. Yeah. And uh, just for the audience right, right off the bat who might have heard that, that's not what I'm talking about. Uh, so there's this belief that's been around since the 50s or so uh, where Basically, our universe is one of many, and uh, these other universes are, are inhabited by basically doubles of ourselves. You know, there's other versions of ourselves. Any choice that we could have made, um, you know, we've made in these other universes. And that version I don't agree with. <laughs> and uh, the, the multiverse that I understand is basically you could think of a stack of uh, paper, like a ream of paper. Right. You take one sheet out, that's, think of that as just like one universe, a two-dimensional universe. 
Uh, but when you put it back in the stack, you have many two-dimensional universes layered up to create one three-dimensional object, you know, a stack sure. of paper. I kind of think heaven's like that. I, I, think, I think our universe is just one three-dimensional slice of God's grand construct. So when people say, well, are these other universes inhabited? Or, well, no, they don't have to be. It could just be us. But there are extra-dimensional beings, angels, things like that, that can inhabit one or more of these universes at one time. Just like when we go through existence, we're traveling through many two-dimensional universes. Right. Yeah. No. So that's the basic idea. And, and that was a great explanation. I appreciate it. I'm going to take you to the next step. Okay. <clears throat> because when, when we uh, list things we should not talk about as Christians, uh, way high on the list is UFOs. And yeah. as you were talking, I'm thinking to myself, uh, you know, UFOs pop out of nowhere mm -hmm. and they return to nowhere. Uh, uh, Mr. John Smith standing in his front yard and he sees a green globe that just goes pop and it's yep. there it is and it flies from... Uh, this side of his yard to that side of his yard, pop, it disappears. <laughs> yeah. And so he calls the police and then he explains all this to them and they pat him on the head and go <laughs> back to their office. <laughs> well, multiply that by 10,000 times. Mm -hmm. People see, see things popping in and popping out all the time. And we as Christians, uh, and I'm going to address this to both of you, we as Christians have to deal with the reality of that. We've come into a period of time, I think just preceding the book of Revelation. Yeah, me too. And, and I think we're going to see a lot more of that kind of phenomena. I think as, as time goes on, as prophecy is being fulfilled, the veil is thinning. Uh, I think it gives more rise. The, the more the world is rejecting God even, it, it gives uh, the enemy more of an opportunity to come into our reality. And basically with that popping in and out, it would be like, again, if there's a two-dimensional universe and I were to put my finger in it. Chuck Missler uses this uh, flatland analogy a lot, and right. actually a lot of physicists do. Um, to a flatlander, a two-dimensional being, they would just see a circle pop in and out of existence. As I'm, you know, well, we see that in three dimensions with some of these UFOs. So some of them, not all of them, but some of them, I believe, are extra-dimensional, or we could say spiritual. It's, you know, two different words for essentially the same thing. Uh, and I think as time goes on, as prophecy gets fulfilled, uh, and Book of Revelation and uh, many books in the Bible speak to this, we're going to see that more and more and more. It's going to keep increasing. Well, I, and I agree too. And by the way. Many people think that when you're seeing these UFOs, you're seeing demonological or angelological uh, activity, and that's why it appears to break everything we know mm -hmm. about physics. The, you know, we think of propulsion systems. There's no yeah. way it could be flying at such speeds and make a sharp right angle turn. But that's right. because we're thinking of it in terms of technology yeah. uh, as we understand it. Before we went on the air. Uh, today we were talking about you know Mount Graham and the Apache Indians. Well, their whole creation myth, which sounds like it's taken right out of the Old Testament, starts with this idea that this giant uh, cylindrical disc descended down over the top of the mountain, and in it sat a bearded man, and he's the creator, and he starts making all the good things that are in the world, right? Uh, and then he goes away and then a portal opens and a reptile comes through, a dragon, and starts deceiving the world. And then giants come and then God has to send a flood. Well, you know, and, uh, Tom, <coughs> let me quickly interrupt. When you talk, I just want to interrupt you a thousand <laughs> times because you, you're so interesting. But the dragon, <clears throat> virtually every pagan ancient culture has the dragon. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's, he's everywhere. Mm -hmm. And you, you say a, a, a bearded uh, man who created the world. Well, duh. Right. <laughs> yeah. Versus the dragon. Yeah. And right. We, we read about that in the Bible. Right. Yep. So, well, that's exactly right. And so, what it shows <laughs> is you it, it, you have a universal story that dates back to an original truth that mm -hmm. came from God, right? And then after the fall of man, this stuff all gets splintered out. It gets paganized. Mm -hmm. These deceptive spirits will take it and tweak it and change it because they want to be worshipped instead of having God worship. But it does tell us that there was a universal reality that was global in scale. The flood was global in scale. The, the incursion of the giants, this was global in scale, right? Yeah. These, are, these are universal truths. Uh, one thing I should say, uh, having said so much stuff about Native Americans and Indians, I don't want to sound like a new ager here. Uh, <laughs> one of the first things we did was we said, we got to first find if there is a biblical precedent for this idea, yep. that there could be strategic locations, geographic locations, often associated with mountains, mm -hmm. where there are doorways through which things come and go. And once we started thinking that way, 
It was amazing. The whole Bible, whether it's Jesus in the New Testament saying, from henceforth you will see the windows of heaven open yeah. and angels ascending and descending, right? Or Jacob's ladder in the Old Testament. You know, we read that in the King James, okay, there's a ladder. What, what is this? Like, kind of like unfolding down out of the, out of the <laughs> attic? Or, you know, what are we talking about here, right? Uh, but no, what, what Jacob says, if you read it in the Hebrew, he says, there is a gate here mm-hmm. yes. to the house of God, a doorway, a portal, uh, to use our terms, right? Jesus at, at, the, at the base of Caesarea Philippi. I was just Right at that. the bottom of Mount yeah. Hermon is one of the most important biblical mountain locations directly tied to gates. The Hebrews at the time of Christ believed that it was the doorway into the underworld, the watchers, the fallen angels. Mm-hmm. And Jesus stands right there and He says, and the gates of hell will not prevail yeah. against my church. And a few days later He's in the underworld presenting Himself to those fallen angels that thought they were going to stop the coming of the Messiah and saying, look boys, you failed, right? <laughs> you know, in the, in the uh, April uh, 2017 uh, issue of the Prophecy Watcher, uh, I've written uh, a, an article about the prophetic gates of Jerusalem uh, during Nehemiah's day when he surveyed the gates. And I make the point, which the Bible makes time and time again, <clears throat> that the gates are uh, representative of God's uh, rule and, and his methodology as, as he interacts with man. Mm-hmm. But you just pointed out that there is a dark side that has its own gates. Right. Well, and it's, and it's mm-hmm. also tied to prophecy. Again, you read Revelation 9, a gate of the earth, something opens to the bottomless pit. But Isaiah 13, you know, and most Bible expositors believe that Isaiah 13 has not been fulfilled because it describes the utter destruction of Babylon to the point that it cannot even be inhabited, right? Yeah. Right. Uh, and so that hasn't happened as of yet. It's going to happen. And when it does, God speaking through Isaiah says, open the gates. So this is plural mm-hmm. now. Open the gates, ye ruler. I give command and I bring them. Giants are coming to fulfill my wrath. Mm -hmm. So there is a time that is coming. And I think this is literally one of the most overlooked aspects of end times Bible prophecy. Uh, Of all the stuff, your prophecy watchers, we have Skywatch TV, we all talk about prophecy. But very few people have made this point that the opening of the doorways of the earth and of the heavens have an awful lot to do with the fulfillment of prophecy. And it isn't just giants, the offspring of the Nephilim and all that. Uh, Revelation also talks about how in the tribulation period all of a sudden a mighty angel. Imagine how this is going to stop CNN in their tracks, right? Wow. When they're doing their latest poll questioning yeah. if, G- if there was ever a historical Jesus, yeah. right? And all of a sudden a mighty angel appears in the heaven and begins to preach the everlasting gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's going to be seen by the whole world, right? So there are some super dynamic things that are part of Bible prophecy that connect to this idea of other dimensional realities and the moments in time in which it can and will interact with our world. And so this book, Abaddon Arising, uh, by Thomas Horn, Josh Peck, you need to read this. It is very, very pertinent uh, to the conversation we're having today. Namely, we've arrived at the time when the gates are opening just perhaps a little bit, but they're mm-hmm. about to swing wide open. In other words, uh, power is, is about to be displayed in amazing ways as we come to the culmination of, of this time period. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and that's what you're talking about then <clears throat> when you talk about the multiverse. Yes. That is a relationship between God and man. Yeah, it's really just talking about spiritual reality from a, a biblical first, but also a scientific point of view, because really they're both one and the same. There, there's no true dichotomy between the Bible and science. If you have true science, you have the Bible, the true interpretation of whatever you're looking at. They should go hand in hand. Now, what's really the key portion of this book? Uh, that is to say, what's the most exciting part? If I were <laughs> looking at this in a bookstore and thumbing through to find the good part, uh, what's this book really about? Uh, what excites you about about Abaddon? Well, I think uh, really just that we're we're living in um, we're we're living in a time where yes, there are some 
concerning things ahead. I don't want to say frightening because we're not given a spirit of fear, of course. But th there are some things to look forward to, but there's also great hope in that mm -hmm. because we're even closer to the return of Jesus. Yeah, I mean, your, your conference this year, the Blessed yes. Hope Conference, yeah, that when, says it all. We're talking about, when we're talking about even you know, the development of science, that the further they push open these doors, the more they find God looking back at them, mm -hmm. right? Um, but it also speaks to the imminency of the second coming of Jesus Christ. And uh, so all around the world today, prophecy is being fulfilled. Science mm -hmm. appears that it is poised to fulfill certain parts of prophecy. Yep. It's the blessed hope. Uh, by the way, I'm going to be at your conference this year, and I hope to speak. Yep. Josh is going Me to be too. there. We'll be speaking. We're very <laughs> excited to... Uh, <clears throat> let people know that well, uh, we're really thrilled that you're coming actually yeah. and Josh I know you're going to have a great message uh, and Tom hey when you take the stage <laughs> every eye oh. is waiting for that moment uh, you've, got, you've got a way uh, of just turning a crowd in your direction I love it when you speak well I'll try to get my bluff in on them I guess <laughs> <laughs> the book is called Abaddon Ascending and we've given you a little peek at what it's about. We have that in our online bookstore. Uh, we're combining it, as we love to do, with uh, a couple of other books. Uh, one is called Forbidden Gates, mm -hmm. to use the word gate again. Tom and Nita Horn authored this one, and then Pandemonium's Engine. And we're putting uh, this, uh, these three books together as what we're calling the secret technology package. We've reached an era in which technology is not what it used to be. Uh, yeah. In fact, technology is almost verging on magic these days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's intersecting with Scripture, because Scripture speaks of the spiritual world authoritatively. Science is looking in the wrong direction to try to find the same thing, and they're going to be sorely disappointed. <clears throat> these three books, The Secret Technology Package, come with something free. Uh, Inhuman, uh, produced by Skywatch TV. Inhuman, the next and final phase of man is here. We're on the edge of something, guys. Uh, check this package, our secret technology package we're calling it. It's a wealth of information about where we are in Bible prophecy, time, space, it's an exciting time to be alive, right? Oh, it truly is. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And by the way, that film that you're giving away free is a two-time Telly Award-winning documentary. Mm -hmm. And it speaks of a different kind of gateway. Uh, you know, the angels that descended in the days of Jared, they used DNA. They used genetics to create an, uh, a mutation into which they could extend themselves. That's Ooh. a different kind of a doorway. Are we repeating that? Is this the days of Noah that Jesus talked about? I think so. I mean, who am I to say so? But I think so. Yeah. I think yeah, we do too. <laughs> it's been great talking to both of you. Well, it's, it's always, always great, great to talking be. to you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, the time has come to talk of things formerly hidden. And that tells us what time it is in the world today. <clears throat> we invite you, uh, of course, to keep watching. We are. <laughs> Thanks for joining us on Prophecy Watchers. You can find us on the web at prophecywatchers.com where you can sign up for our free email newsletter or follow us at facebook.com slash prophecywatchers. In the meantime, keep watching everybody and we'll see you soon. <laughs>